Hello and welcome to ihnani.com. jQuery for Beginners. Level 1. Video 3. This is the third video of the series, and if you have not gone through our previous videos, I recommend you to complete them, before proceeding with this one. Let us now look at a different approach to add scripts into our page. This is the script tag, that references the jQuery library in our page. We do have another script tag, which contains that jQuery code that we have written, to handle the click event, and to add animation to the page. These two scripts are now placed inside the head, tag. But there is also another approach to the place where we can insert them. We can move them here, that is just above the closing body tag. Let us move the script tags from the head section to just above the closing body tag. Was there anything wrong? In having them within the head, tags. The answer would be that it was not wrong, but it would have made the pages to load slowly when comparing it with the same tags being moved down in the page. Let me explain it. Though putting scripts into head is a common practice, but highly optimized sites move the scripts to the end of the page. Using the script tag just before the ending body tag, sometimes increases the speed at which your page loads. It's always advisable to have the JavaScript as low in the page as possible. If it's just before the ending body tag, it's even better. When a browser is rendering an HTML page, and meets the script tag, it switches into JavaScript mode to execute the script code. It continues with the rest of the page only after the script code is processed. With scripts, progressive rendering is blocked for all content below the script. Moving scripts as low in the page as possible means there's more content above the script that is rendered sooner. Let us save the page and browse it. You can see that there is no change in the appearance of the page, and if you go and click on the Click Me link, it's disappearing and appearing as it used to when we used the local jQuery file reference. You might not notice any difference at all, but this approach proves to be effective on those pages, where there are a lot of content and scripting involved. The advantage of this method is achieving greater download parallelization. The HTTP 1.1 specification suggests the browsers not to download more than two components in parallel per host name, but, in today's sites, there are instances wherein we will be downloading content from multiple host names. At the same time if we also use CDN hosted jQuery library, then this adds to the existing list of host names. While a script is downloading, however, the browser won't start any other downloads, even on different host names. This causes the page rendering to stop until the script is downloaded and processed. If we have the script at the end of the page, then by the time the browser starts to download the script tag, the HTML page would have been displayed at least to a certain extent to the user, which gives the user a kind of speedy rendering of the page. While moving scripts to the end of the body section is suggested, it's not always possible to do so. For example, there are many instances where we use the document.write method to insert some part of the page content. In such a scenario, we can't move this code down. Hence we have an alternate option, that is to use deferred scripts. The defer attribute indicates that the script does not contain document.write and is a clue to browsers that they can continue rendering. Unfortunately, we cannot use the defer attribute to get the complete result. Also, by moving the script tag to the bottom of the body tag, we can be sure that the entire DOM is loaded before the JavaScript is applied. 
executing JavaScript code after the DOM has loaded. If you remember, in our last video, I mentioned that we should make sure that the JavaScript code has to be executed only after loading the complete DOM. The reason for this is that any DOM traversing and manipulation will require the DOM to be loaded before it can be operated on. What if the DOM is still not loaded? And the JavaScript starts to execute and searches for a particular node that is still not loaded. This will throw an error. In order to avoid such a situation, we need a kind of mechanism to inform us when the complete DOM is loaded, but before loading any other additional resources such as images, flash or silver light components. Say if we are working with JavaScript, then we should be using window.onload event which only fires once the complete page is loaded. But, we cannot afford to make the user wait for the page to load. In such a scenario, we have a solution from jQuery through its ready method. The ready method, which is a custom event handler is bound to the DOM's document object. The ready event handler is fired only after the DOM is fully loaded but before loading other resources as mentioned above. Let us see how to use this. It's pretty simple, in the jQuery code that you have written, before the function keyword, enter the words document.ready as you see. Make sure the parenthesis and the curly braces are properly closing. Let us save the page and browse it. You can see that there is no change in the appearance of the page, and if you go and click on the Click Me link, it's disappearing and appearing as it used to when we used the local jQuery file reference. You should always follow the approach of setting up the document.ready event handler. But if you remember, in our previous video we had flouted all the norms that I am explaining now. We had the script tag in the head which starts executing even before DOM is loaded and then since we are not using document.ready, there will be nothing to stop jQuery from being executed, which means we have errors to handle. But we still did not get any errors, isn't it? That is because, even in our previous examples I had used the ready method. Writing dollar function is the shorthand version of writing dollar document dot ready function. That's the reason, I had mentioned earlier, that the jQuery library has to be executed only after the DOM loads, and even our code was using the shorthand version of ready method, meaning it used to only execute after the DOM is loaded. I will end this video by introducing to another function, namely, the window.load function, which is very similar to the document.ready function, except that it also waits for all of the graphics on the page to load before executing any jQuery code. Hope this should be sufficient for this video. What we covered in this video we looked at adding jQuery using a CDN hosted library. We spoke about a better approach of adding the script into our files to make it faster. We went through the reasons to only start executing jQuery after the DOM is loaded. We looked at the ready and window.load functions provided by jQuery library. In our next video, I will continue with some more important concepts related to jQuery library. If you have any questions or need more information on a part of this video, please use the forum at ignani.com. We will be happy to help you. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how-to videos and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all your